Hi, I'm Kerry with uh, Best of Us Investors. And for those of you who have been on my channel for a while, uh, you know that I'm basically an investor in the future and I'm invested in a very small category of stocks. I have been reluctant to get involved in Bitcoin, but then I was reluctant to get involved in Tesla a year ago, and Homer convinced me it was actually a good investment, and now it's my largest holding. So I admit that I changed my mind. Bitcoin's a different story, though. Bitcoin is more complicated than Tesla, to my understanding. And so I've reached out to my tribe, and my tribe is a group of 18,552 people who come to our Discord, and we exchange ideas. And one of those ideas that has been regularly hammered on me is, Kerry, you really need to learn more about Bitcoin. And Jim Wells has stepped forward and has taught me about it, and I've been working with him for the past month on entering our community uh, as a YouTube channel. He is going to be part of Best of Us Investors, and he is going to be our educator on Bitcoin. What I have suggested to him and what he has agreed to do is to do videos. He's going to do two videos a week to start out. We're going to put them up on Tuesday and Thursday at 4 uh, p.m. That would be uh, Central Standard Time. You can adjust that to yours. And he's going to educate you about Bitcoin. He's also going to educate me. What I'd like to do now in this video is introduce you to uh, Jim Wells, and I'm going to ask him some questions that I need settled, and I'm going to encourage you to join with me to learn more about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in this whole world that is changing our monetary system. So stay with me. Uh, Jim and I are going to have a conversation. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. All right. Um, as I have promised you, I'm here today with Jim Wells. Jim is a member of our tribe, and he has... Um, taken an interest in in uh, Bitcoin he has shared with me. Well, I'll let him share with you uh, his story and how he got involved in it. And what I've asked him to do is come on today and speak to me as a doubter. And uh, we're going to do a point and counterpoint and see. And then Jim is going to uh, become a part of our channel, and he's going to put out regular videos um, at, at a, a pace. We'll probably start with two a week and then see, um, see how it works for him and get you educated on crypto. So thank you for, thank you for stepping up to the plate on this, Jim. And um, give, give us a little background and uh, what, what, you, what your ambitions are. Okay, I've been an educator for the past 25 years, and um, I just started investing a while back, and I really got into the cryptocurrency space about a year ago. Uh, saw some videos by um, Andreas Antonopoulos and a couple other Bitcoin enthusiasts, and and I basically just started researching it. And the more I researched it, the more the further I went down the rabbit hole, and just got very excited about the space. I started investing in it through Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and then really got into it and found out about all the intricacies of it and and got into some other spaces, got into some other cryptocurrencies, altcoins, and and I've just continued to learn and to uh, delve into the area. Okay. And you feel you feel now you're smart enough that you can uh, you can share your knowledge with other people. I feel like I've done an awful lot of research, read books, articles, watched a lot of videos. Um, the people that are the authorities in the area that are obviously uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, of course, the white papers, but you have Michael Saylor and, uh, as I said, Andreas and Raul Paul. Um, I'm a member of Real Vision. Okay. I watch all the uh, videos on macroeconomics. Um, 
And then Kathy Wood is a huge supporter, uh, along with uh, Anthony Pompolino and um, other people in the space. And I've watched, read, and done as much research as I possibly could, could in the past year. So, and I think the uh, the excited the exciting part about this space is then when I start talking and having conversations with someone that might know more than me, I stop talking and I listen. Okay. So, uh, so I'm I'm willing to listen. Um, I'm, I'm getting involved with the Discord. Uh, seem to be some very knowledgeable people on the Discord. So I'm willing to listen and to have a conversation about it. Um, that's the only way you learn. Uh, I think you'll find that when you enter into this space, that your friends and the people that you know, the people that you're involved with, uh, probably don't know a whole lot about the space. I is nobody that I know does. So yeah. It comes. It comes. The knowledge comes from discords and getting involved in the community. Okay, um, you know how I feel of it. I, I just explained to to Jim earlier that it's a risk and reward situation with me. And and I think um, when you approach your life that way, that once you become comfortable with it, that equation moves. The needle moves more towards less risk and greater reward. So. I, what would you say to me? I'm a 76 year old man. I'm financially independent. I, I, why would I put $40,000? What's it? What is it today? I didn't even look. It's around $50,000. Okay. It's right around $50,000. Okay. Why would I put, be, and, and I, I need to explain. It's difficult me to, for me to buy part of anything. Uh, I want the whole. Would you advise me? Um, I've got a million dollar put portfolio. Would you advise me to put that much in at this point? Uh, would I should I buy a coin? Well, I'm I'm a proponent of uh, and Anthony Pompolino talks about this of dos, uh, of cost dollar averaging or dollar cost averaging. So basically, whatever money you've allocated towards the space, um, I believe that you should put in in percentages so that the volatility doesn't affect you as much. So okay. um, if you wanted if you wanted to get exposure now, maybe 10% of what you're willing to allocate and maybe every month put 10% in, then I don't think the volatility hurts you as much. Okay. And again, if you get to know more the, uh, about the space and you feel more secure in it, maybe you want to allocate more. Um, what you said about your portfolio, um, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, when you when you take into account some of the things that you've said with my house and my index fund, it's it's still less than twenty percent of my portfolio. Okay. Now, for somebody in your position, now if I had a million dollar portfolio, I, I would want to protect that. I probably wouldn't want to be quite as volatile, so I would probably recommend around five percent of your portfolio or what you were comfortable with. Okay, that's that's a number. In fact, I've heard four to five percent, uh, and that's what when I when I thought I was going to do it and then it skyrocketed and I said, well, well, I missed that one. Uh, maybe I'll wait for the, for it to come down. But I do, do you believe it will come down? Um, that's really tough to say. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm more of a, a macro in my approach, macro in, in the long term in my approach. And I've, I've looked at it in comparison with gold and in comparison with the dollar. And uh, besides, when the big crisis is, there's really, I, I don't see a huge um, correlation, to be honest with you. So I, you know, I don't, I don't exactly know. And I think you've spoke about that. We're not, we're not sure, you know, treasury bonds might be much more safe if the market crashes. We don't know how it's going to react. And I think that's one of the things that, uh, that Andreas talks about. You, you can't use the, the old uh, macroeconomic meters because it's just too young. You have you have to. Uh, it's almost like a belief or a faith in where it's going in the technology. A lot like you know you talk about with the future is faster than you think, and and the um, the technology that we're going into in for uh, electric cars or any any of the other things that you believe in the future. Do you believe in the idea of uh, the digitization of money, and do you believe that this is an asset that is scarce in value? It has value. It has useful applications. And um, I believe in both of those things. By the way, I also believe 
in where technology is taking us. Yeah. I also do believe in big tech and and the future of, of what's going. And this is one of the areas that I fits that I think feel very strongly fits into that category. Let me then. I spent a uh, little over a week in Cuba. Uh, well, it was right about a year ago, and um, and I recognized that Cuba can controls its population by controlling its currency. Uh, mm -hmm. And and it's like the gentleman, the, our guide said, um, they have uh, Cuban pesos. He said, a, a, a bushel basket of Cuba, Cuban pesos won't buy me a candy bar anywhere other than mm -hmm. Cuba. So when I think of a currency that is controlled through a computer, and, and a blockchain, how does the United States government control its people if it doesn't control its currency? Um, how do they, if, if, they're, if the currency is off somewhere else, how do they collect taxes? How, do, how does that all work? Well, I don't think you're going to see the US dollar be replaced anytime soon. I think this is going to be more of a vehicle um, so, I, I, yes, it is a currency in that, in that sense, but I think it's going to work alongside the U.S. dollar. Uh, now, if the U.S. dollar collapses, it's another it's another means. Um, if you're invested in it, I don't I, I don't think anyone should put their entire wealth into it because it's still in its infancy stages. So, um, but it's interesting that you pointed out um, third world countries, uh, Cuba, Zimbabwe. Cyprus, they had the issues in Cyprus. Uh, there's this very strong um, belief right now that there's a very strong, they're, they're really moving into Africa with the, the whole cryptocurrency space, uh, subterranean Africa, Ethiopia, those areas. Uh, and they're talking to the government about really helping the nation out be, and using this as, as this space to uh, as as a way of helping out the currency, we, in those third world countries, you know, they, they don't have access to banks. That's, that's correct. That's I it. know that. And they, they they have problems with identification, but and and being able to link up. It's a, it's a, it gives them an opportunity to be involved in the world, and it gives them a chance to actually be able to store wealth. And I can understand that. But what if what if the federal government says we're going to have our own cryptocurrency and it's going to be the only cryptocurrency. What happens? Well, this is a, this right now, this is, you got to think of it in terms of, they, don't, they have to shut down the internet because that, that is the vehicle for how the cryptocurrency wow. to the miners. I mean, are they going to re really regulate the internet? That's, that's, the, that's the big issue. I mean, right now it is the the miners are basically, in the sense, they regulate it, um, they validate it, and the miners are worldwide. Anyone with a computer that mines for the Bitcoin, uh, not only do they produce it, but they they mine it and they have a say in what happens. And it's all it's all about. So I think it's going to be very difficult at this point with the amount of interest that's involved and the institutional investors that are involved to actually stop it. It would it'd almost be like them coming in and saying, all right, now the internet's illegal. Okay. Just, that's, that's the way I look at it. And I, and I think that, that makes sense to me. That uh, So do you believe then that the, that the U.S. government will create a cryptocurrency as, as you and can? And I guess what I'm saying is I can see why, why do they want to keep running those presses? You know, it's, it, 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 it isn't an efficient way. And um, so I could envision that they could have their own cryptocurrency and the two could function side by side. Now the question becomes, can I go to Publix and buy an Apple with Bitcoin as well? Can I buy it with the U.S. cryptocurrency? Um, and I guess that then comes down to our business is going to adopt it. Okay, so there's a, there's a lot of issues there. <laughs> so um, 
<clears throat> I think the biggest thing that you have to, when you talk about the cryptocurrency space, the idea is that it's decentralized. Um, and that's the whole power of it, the beauty of it. Uh, it can be sent to the, there's no permission that is asked to use it. Uh, you, you, they can't really take it away from you in the sense that they would have to come into your house and take it off your hard drive. I mean, it's okay. It's pretty safe and secure. You can have it. You could even carry it with you in a ledger in a, in a in a wallet off the and pull it right off the internet. So you you have you have control of it. If you own the keys, you have control of that. That so that that's the first issue. It's is is the fact that. The whole draw of it is the fact that it's decentralized, that it's, and I'll go back to Satoshi Nakamoto with your question. It's peer to peer, and it's meant to be a world currency, basically, that is ledgered and secured on the blockchain itself. So, um, so I could see, I mean, could the US government use blockchain technology i don't see the draw for that because people don't want to go through banks and lending institutions that's the whole point of it they want it to be decentralized they want they want to be in control of their money they want instant access they want to be able to trade they want to transfer uh money to a friend in europe and trend and transfer for euros immediately they can, they can do that. They can they can send Bitcoin. You can send a million dollars in Bitcoin to Africa or to Europe within 10 minutes. You know, so it's it's very functional. Nobody wants to wait to go to get permission to, to cross borders, to go through lending institutions. Uh, so and that's the that's the functionality and the use of it. When you get down to the economic factors of it, the whole idea of the scarcity and there only being 21 million Bitcoin gives it the value. Is okay. Value. So, so again, in, in what when you said that, I thought of the gold standard it, that that the dollar used to have to be backed by so many ounces of gold, and that was pretty much I think in the '60s when that went away, and that's why our dollar is becoming so devalued as it is now. Okay, you're you're beginning to convince me. Um, all right. Um, what other benefits do you see? Well, <laughs> probably the biggest benefit that I see is really is Michael Saylor's narrative and his narrative. Tell me who Michael is, Saylor is. Oh, Michael Saylor. He is the CEO for MicroStrategy, which is a software company. And he basically invested his entire company, all of his company's holdings and his stocks into Bitcoin and his company tripled in value overnight and it and he's completely in value. he's one of the strongest proponents so I, I really encourage you to go on YouTube and check out a couple interviews with Michael Saylor okay uh, yeah he's very passionate and I will his his main quote is is that it is an inflationary asset that works against the deflationary currency of the U.S. dollar. Um, and we'll see over time if that comes to pass, but it, it's scarce, it's secure, it's ledgered, it's encrypted, encoded, and it has value because there is a finite amount. Jim, a your challenge is to get this down to where us lay people really understand it. And um, I'm going to give you that challenge to me because I'm not there yet. It, there's too, too many terminologies, too many, too many um, this and that. And uh, so that's your challenge for the best of us investors. Get it down to what, where us lay people can understand it, where we can see it. Um, I would encourage you when you use these numbers, use a whiteboard or something because uh, we get too many numbers in our head and we stop. The head shuts okay. down. Okay. And I apologize. I'm just excited about the space. Oh, I, well, that's wonderful. That, that's, yeah. that's why I think people, uh, I'm enthusiastic about what I do. And that's why I want you to be a part of what we're doing. Okay. Okay. 
So you know that Jim's going to be with us now on a regular basis every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. And as he gets his feet under him, we'll probably expand that schedule as we uh, find what your interests are. If you want to be a participant in this, and is go to bestofusinvestors.com. You'll find there a place to register and give me your email address and your, um, your name and I'll send you a link to our Discord. There you can talk to Jim, you can talk to me, you can talk to some of the other 18,556 people, uh, and you can become a better investor because what our goal is, is to number one, make better investment decisions based on knowledge. That's what I need for Bitcoin. Number two, keep more of what we make, and that is by understanding the tax code and how we can use it to our advantage. And number three, to accumulate wealth. Our goal is $24 million because under the U.S. tax code, Need and I are allowed to pass just under $24 million income tax-free to our heirs. So that's our goal. That's what I work to do as well as to educate you about the investment world and the multitude of opportunities. So tune in to, to Jim. Uh, his first one will be out Tuesday at 4 p.m. You'll be notified to it if you are subscribed. And if you aren't, uh, subscribe down below and give us a thumbs up because we're trying to make you the best of us investors.